This is Our View, brought to you by the proud members of the Washington Federation of State Employees, the people who work for you. Lisa Tavares, a community corrections officer in Yakima and a member of the Federation, recently was shot and wounded when she approached the house to apprehend a drive-by shooting suspect. She's recovered and is now back on the job. But Lisa is not dwelling on the incident, which might make a lot of us look for a different career, but rather she is now asking the public to remember that while apprehending dangerous people is part of the job, so is helping offenders become productive members of the community. Lisa Tavares is this year's recipient of the Federation of State Employees Meritorious Service Award. Well, I think that's the idea of probation. That's the idea of probation in history, is to uh, get them reprogrammed and back into the community in which the rest of us live. Now, it's done differently in each state. In our state, we had the parole system. We no longer have that. We, have a, we, have, we had a system of, here's the punishment and we're done with you. Now we're getting right back into, here are some rehabilitation techniques that we're using back in the old, the old days in parole and prior to 1984. Um, to, and it's called Swift and Certain right now. And it's allowing us to work even closer with the clients. You know, some of them are clients, some of them are offenders because they refuse to change. Our focus needs to be on the ones who want to change. And th that's where our resources need to go. The Eric Romero situation is a prime example of him being offender and not wanting to change. Um, all the way up to that point, he's proven that he does not want to change. He is who he is, and those folks need to be targeted. But we also need to target those folks who choose to change, give them resources, lead them the way. Uh, uh, treatment, we need resources for treatment. Um, if, 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 if they're not using, they're not committing crimes. Uh, if they're not using, they're finding jobs. Um, things like that, the pro-social aspects of, of change. We need more for that. Uh, it's, I think DOC calls it the re-engineering of community corrections now. Um, and that's basically the big push right now. And it starts with the community corrections officer who has to sit down each day and, and speak to these clients and try to motivate them to change. Um, but that's, that's, that takes a long time to do. Each officer, they don't have 30 minutes to spend with these clients. They have literally minutes, because that's how, that's how big their caseloads are. Uh, not to mention the amount of time they have to spend in the street, uh, going to their homes, visiting them at home in their environment, which is very unsafe, but these officers do that. They do it with very little training, um, and they do it with very little resources, and they still do it. They need to, to have the tools to better be able to change these minds that have been who they are since, since they were born. They recidivate. There's no, there's no accounting system uh, to, to go and, and to, to, to pinpoint everything that we do good. We can't measure the amount of lives they save simply by having a, a longer conversation with a client or asking them how is their day today. And we need more wiggle room to figure out what these clients need, and they won't get to the point where they're harming others. If we change those folks and we, we assimilate them and give them the resources they need to be successful, how can you measure that? What, but by the, 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 the victims that aren't being tallied? <laughs> yeah, we're, not ta we're not tallying a victim toll. You know, we're tallying something else. And I think we're, 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 we're looking at the wrong numbers. So I'd like to recognize all, all of those members of this task force. Uh, these are very well trained and dedicated, dedicated public servants along with myself. Are the real reason Eric Romero is behind bars where he deserves to be. I also, thank you, I also humbly accept this award on behalf of the community corrections officers and the specialists throughout this state. chose public service to make an unaccountable difference that goes unrecognized on a daily basis. And I always like to say, we didn't find public service, it found us. And on September 3rd at around 1.15 p.m., my team found the wolf. 
In the words of uh, Lieutenant Dave Grossman, if you know who he is, you'll know what the rest of this means. Eric Romero was a man who preys on others and doesn't deserve to walk amongst us. We will never know how many lives will be saved by this removal, but I do know on this day he met a sheepdog. I thank you again for this award, and I will continue to do great work out there and remove these folks who do not deserve to be amongst us. Thank you. AFSCME President Lee Saunders brought the Federation a message this year that we, and the entire labor movement, must not just take care of ourselves, but also stand up for the rights of all workers and those seeking social justice in our communities. We can not only work within the labor movement, but we've got to work outside the labor movement. We've got to cultivate and rebuild our relationships with our coalition partners, with our community partners. We've got to ask them for support. But just as we ask them for support, when they ask us for support, we must be there for them. This is not a transactional relationship. It's a transformational relationship. We aren't trying just to rebuild a labor movement. We've got to rebuild a movement in this country of labor unions, of students, of retirees, of the faith-based community, of working families. And you're doing it right here in Washington State. You work with broad coalitions to fight for working families, to protect the most vulnerable in this state. You're fighting against the Freedom Foundation and all their lives and coalition with other organizations and other unions across the state. And I think I read something a couple of days ago where at the University of Washington in Seattle, because of that coalition, your activism and the activism of the students and other labor unions, you had to fight for 15. That's right. yeah. And now those workers are going to get $15 an hour for minimum wage. That's what this movement, rebuilding this movement, is all about. Sisters and brothers, here's the bottom line. We're one of the last organized forces with the power to stand up for working families. We've got to bring in other organizations and folks to stand up with us. And we must be strong enough for the job. I know it's a tremendous responsibility. It's a heavy load. But you know what? Throughout our history, throughout the pr proud history of AFSCME, we've shouldered that weight. At a recent conference in Paris, AFL-CIO President Richard Trumka told his audience that the social issues of immigration and excessive numbers of citizens in the correction system are being used to drag down the wages for millions of American workers. If you look at the United States, we first privatized prisons. When we privatized prisons, they started lobbying for longer terms, for three strikes and you get a life prison, so they have lifelong customers. That's one third of the black population. Oh, it's true, you get a lifelong customer whenever you send them to prison for life. That's what they advocated for. That, those people are now out. They don't get paid, they drag down wages for everybody. The other problem, social dimension in the United States, is we have an immigration <coughs> problem. You got 11 and a half million people that are undocumented in the United States that are working. They have no rights. Every time they try to point out a safety violation, they get sent back or deported or fired. They have no rights. They drive down the wages for everyone. So those social problems can be regulated, can be fixed, by the federal government that can help raise wages for everyone and thus increase demand for everyone on the consumer side. And, it, and if you look at countries, the, the U.S. is a classic example of not investing enough. Uh, they're afraid to invest because there isn't the consumer demand. Wages have been stagnant. They, look to, they invest in hedge funds that buy other companies and don't really have real investment in anything. Uh, some of the, the countries in Europe uh, are, they're lacking uh, the public investment that's needed to stimulate and create the demand and the confidence of consumers so that private uh, investment can then kick in and augment uh, that public uh, uh, investment that's being made. 
once you start pulling back on the public side, private side pulls back as well. Lately, in our view, we have been asking, when are we going to start producing leaders like these again? And this month, we asked that again. William Bradford, speaking in 1630 of the founding of the Plymouth Bay Colony, said that all great and honorable actions are accompanied with great difficulty, and both must be enterprised and overcome with answerable courage. If this capsule history of our progress teaches us anything, it is that man in his quest for knowledge and progress is determined and cannot be deterred. The exploration of space will go ahead. Whether we join in it or not, we mean to be a part of it. We mean to lead it. For the eyes of the world now look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond. Our leadership in science and industry, our hopes for peace and security, our obligations to ourselves as well as others, all require us to make this effort, to solve these mysteries, to solve them for the good of all men. There is no strife, no prejudice, no national conflict in outer space as yet. Its hazards are hostile to us all. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone and one we intend to win. This has been Our View, brought to you by the members of the Washington Federation of State Employees. We remind you, when you accept a paycheck for your hard work, you don't give up your rights. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next month.